Our team coverage begins with CBS 4's Maribel Rodriguez live in Parkland at the high school there. Maribel, what's the latest? Well, I can tell you we were able to move just a little closer. We are near the school, and right behind me you can see one of BSO's command posts. It is right in front of the school, however, still about a half a mile radius around the school, still blocked off. The only ones being allowed in law enforcement and investigators after a very dark and terrifying moments for an entire school, the community, and everyone touched by this tragedy. Yesterday we spoke with many students and teachers who say that it was near the end of the school day. There were about 20 minutes left when they heard a strange fire alarm. At that same time, they heard shots from an AR-15. And we do want to warn you, the video you're about to see and hear is disturbing. Holy... Someone captured the terror, the sheer terror on cell phone. A former student at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School accused of firing round after round from a rifle at the end of a school day. 17 people are dead. They shot through the windows and you could see through the blinds, the bullets and just all the glass was shattered. For those who live through the nightmare, it is scarring and heartbreaking. And all of a sudden I just hear gunshots and everyone just starts running. Like people start jumping fences and they're just like, I didn't know what was going on. This mother told us her son called her to say he survived, but his teacher died, shielding him from the gunfire. Mom, I am fine, okay? But my teacher died for us. It was a scene all too reminiscent of a school shooting coast to coast. SWAT teams with guns drawn descending on school as frightened students emerged with their hands raised. When law enforcement arrived, they knew someone was on campus and armed. We're going to act as shooter and Stoneman Douglas. After the chaos and the killings, BSO says they found the suspect, Nicholas Cruz, a former student at the school in an area nearby. Off one, Coconut Creek Police advising Nicholas Cruz confirmed in custody. They arrested him and took him to BSO. Meanwhile, students and parents desperately searched on the ground and online for missing friends. We're still hearing that there's kids missing that we know. You know, I'm on the phone with my friend and she's in there. I'm just scared for life to see if she's going to be okay or not. Teachers wondered how things could ever return to normal. I can't imagine even going back to work knowing about all this. Throughout the day, parents raced to school to hug their children. While many found their children unharmed and took them home, other children and staff who came to school Wednesday will never return home. No parent should ever have to send their kids to school and have them not return. That should not happen in Parkland. It shouldn't happen anywhere in this country. And this, we've got to find a way for this to stop. Let's go straight to and this is video of Nicholas Cruz arriving at the main jail in Fort Lauderdale about 30 minutes ago. As you can see, he is still in his hospital, hospital garb, which we saw him wearing when he arrived at BSO headquarters yesterday afternoon. He can be seen with two deputies. He was transferred from BSO headquarters where he was questioned all night. Still so many unanswered questions about this mass shooting. 17 people were killed. BSO telling us 12 of those victims have been identified. Their families have been notified. We're also told they are pouring through a video from inside the school that shows much of what unfolded yesterday afternoon. Their next briefing will be at 10:30 this morning. We're live in Parkland. Maribel Rodriguez, CBS4, this morning.